Okay, let's talk about WaveBurner for just a minute. Um, WaveBurner is a uh, is a CD prep program. So you take your your bounced mix, stereo mix uh, from Pro Tools, or you import it from a CD that you already have, like you recorded live on uh, at the concert. Import it into WaveBurner, and then you can go through and you can uh, edit and add fade ins and fade outs, and prepare a master CD. So let me just show you around the window real quick. We're going to first open up. Um, we have a new file here. We're going to import an audio file. And this would be your bounced Pro Tools mix. And I just have a, a sample piece of audio here to use. You'll see the waveform in the main screen here. Let me just show you around the window real quick. Um, this is the entire file. Um, to zoom in, which you're going to have to to do any editing, there's a slider here. So you can just slide the zoom slider like this. Now if you notice, as I zoom in, you see this box up here. This is a navigation thing. Whatever this box is showing, that's what's in the window on your screen. So if you need to go over to here, just click there. That's what shows on the screen. All right. So let's get started here. First thing you want to do, File, Save As, and you want to save this project into your project folder with your audio. Keep everything bundled together so you know where it is. All right. Now, we need to take this one long file, which has a lot of different songs and pieces that were, that were in the concert, and we need to chop those into individual tracks. So, let's start with track one. The initial blue space here, you leave it alone. Blue space is a gap between CD tracks. Uh, for the very beginning of the CD, uh, CD uh, standard audio requirements are that there are two seconds of silence. So that's what that's there for. But... Uh, after listening to this track, we can tell that this is just a bunch of audience noise and scuffling around before the music actually starts. Well, we don't want that on the CD. So if we point to the edge of a region here, you see the little bracket? I'm holding the mouse button down and dragging to the right. I'm trimming that out. Don't want to hear it on the CD. And then we'll grab this little dot here and create a fade. Now what you want to do is you want to listen to it. Just play the file. And just check your fade, make sure it fades in musically, make sure it doesn't abruptly cut into the music or cut off the music or whatever the case is. So if you need to change your uh, fade, you can make it longer, you can make it shorter, you can even change the shape of the fade by these little middle dots here. If you chopped out too much of the music, you can always add more into it. All right. Now as we go along, let's look up here. I see a flat line there. That's obviously the difference between uh, movements or pieces on the recital. So let's click to go there. Yep, there's our flat line. I want to cut that into two tracks. So hold the Apple key down, click. I've just chopped that into two tracks. Now we need to find the end of this um, first song here. And again, if you click in the time line here, push the space bar to play, you can tell where it actually ends. So let's trim this down to here. Let's add a fade. Now let's go to the second one. Obviously, after listening to it, we don't need all that kind of stuff. There's the beginning of the next piece. And then we're going to grab the dot again. We're going to fade into that. Now what this does at this point is that it fades out of the first track and immediately fades into the second track. Well, we want a gap in between. We need to pause. So just grab this waveform here and drag it out. And then what you do, click in the timeline ahead of it, play it through. How does it play out? Is it musical? You want a nice fade out, a nice few seconds of uh, silence, and then a fade back into the next one. And if you need to change that, yeah, a little bit longer there. Oh, my fade's a little too long. I can shorten that, etc. Okay. Now we'll go to the end of the document. We have to fade out the very end of the recital. And uh, so if you need to trim all the extra little people leaving, scuffling chairs and stuff, you can do that. And then again, create a fade, maybe a longer fade at the end of the CD. Again, click in the timeline, play it out, and see what it does. Make sure it sounds right. So at this point, we've created a two-track CD. And I can zoom back out to get everything in the window if I want to. Now, I need to do uh, something. Uh, it's, it's a quick and dirty way of, of doing this. You want to select all your regions down here in the region uh, window. 
we want to normalize it. We're going to go to Region, Normalize Region, and uh, select it for minus 1 dB. Now, what that does, uh, don't do them individually for concerts. Uh, what that does is it goes through and it finds uh, the highest point of the entire recording. If there's any difference between that and, and zero, which is maximum, uh, it'll crank everything else up to match that. So that gives you a little bit extra gain all the way through. Uh, there are more sophisticated ways of doing that, but that'll get you started for now. Now in our track window down here, we can see um, the tracks we've created. We can rename them. And at this point, uh, the CD should be ready to burn. If you would like to add like a signal processor on the entire um, on the entire mix, you can do that. The bottom right hand window, click on Mix Plugin, Add Plugin, and uh, depending on the kind of plugins you've got installed on your system, uh, we'll go to Audio Units. We'll go to uh, let's try the Focusrite compressor here, and then up comes your uh, processor. So set it. Listen, make sure it sounds halfway decent. Once you're done, you've got a couple of options. You can actually bounce this entire file as one final edited stereo audio file on your computer. Probably not a bad idea. To do that, you just go Region, Bounce Mix. It'll put it all together into one long stereo file with tracks. All right. Uh, the thing we want to make sure that you do is click Burn. We want to burn a CD from this. And that's a quick overview of WaveBurner.